Hello and thanks for coming back. What I wanted to do for you today was I want to show you the process of installation of Mach 3 with the RNR Motion DLL with the files that we get from the vendor. Now I got my files emailed to me. Um, actually they emailed me a link and I had to go download them and I want to talk to you about what comes in that package as well as some precautions you may want to take. Um, as you can see on my desktop, uh, I'm running in a virtual machine, that's why I have a file menu up here at the top. So I'm not actually going to be connecting to my CNC machine, but I am going to go through the entire installation. Um, the things that will fail will be the r, &R motion. The driver will not be able to connect to the board that it needs to in order to um, control the CNC. And you'll see an error message when I get to that point. But let's talk about the files that come from the vendor. I've got all those files right here. Um, I actually have one extra file too, which is a PDF that I found on CNC Zone regarding the configuration and setup of a smaller unit. But the thing to point out is the VFD that he got with his unit is the same as what we get with the 6090 or the 3060. Um, so the things to keep in mind are that some of the configuration that we use for the VFD um, that we can read about in this book applies to our machine as well. And you'll see that it comes down here. He has all of the, uh, basically all the setup codes that we can use to set up our, our VFD uh, documented in this PDF. And I think I have this uh, shared out on my Google Drive. Um, and I'll have a link to that down below in the, in the description. But this is one of the PDFs um, that I found that I just want to talk to you about real briefly. The other one that we get is the instruction manual in English. I'm going to use that loosely. First thing to note is that none of this looks like what we bought. Um, the VFD looks different. The back of the box looks pretty much the same. The CNC looks different. Some of the things to note, though, is like the diagram that uh, shows how to hook it up. These are correct, um, as well as uh, the cooling and the motion of the machine. That's pretty much the really only usable part. The rest of it goes through installing Mach 3, but uh, all the menus are in China, Chinese except for the actual installation. And I'm going to go through this with you anyways. So why don't we miss skip past this part we'll make an effort to just jump right into it so i'm going to actually minimize that window i'm going to go back to the folder of the software that i got and we're going to see we got two folders in here we got the mach 3 software which is actually the installation for mach 3 version r3041 um, keep in mind and run this at your own risk that this is a file that came straight from another country um, this file passes all antivirus scans, but at the same time, if you choose to trust it, you're trusting it at, using it at your own risk. Um, I'm going to just say that. I used my version of Mach 3 that I purchased, so uh, I am not going to use this one on my production machine, but I actually will use this one for the demonstration here. The other folder that we get is the USB 6090 folder. And you're going to see inside of this folder, we've got plugins. And inside of that plugins folder, we have an r, &R Motion DLL. This is actually the part that once we install Mach 3, this will make the connection to the USB board that's going to control the units. This is very important. Um, we have Mach 3 mil. I actually made this one. This is the original, so I can actually show you this one and edit this one. Um, we have a Mach 1 license.dat file. And if we open this beast, we're going to see it's not very readable, I don't believe. Yeah, so we can't really see what that says. That's okay. It will work. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, too. The Mach 3 mil file is an XML document, and we can actually edit that. This is not the best way to edit that. This is just in Notepad. Um, if you want to look at this, I would say open it with something like Internet Explorer, and that way it'll actually break out into something that's a little bit more usable. It did last time. I guess it's not going to this time. But we can talk about it a little bit further as we go. This has all the parameters that um, are going to be 
use to set up your 1690. Those, those are preset from the vendor and uh, we'll drop those in in a second. So let's go back. Let's start our installation of Mach 3. And this is all pretty straightforward. Keeping in mind that um, when you click this yes button, you are saying that this may, wants to make changes to your computer. It's going to make changes to your computer. It's going to write files to your computer. And it's going to run files from your computer. Use at your own risk. The Mach 3 installation is pretty straightforward. We're going to just basically next our way through this. We're going to pick the default directory. And the installation is actually very, very fast. It's a small program. It came, came out quite a while ago. Um, so it's actually not all that big, as you will see. At the end here, it says... Uh, Setup can, form, setup can perform the following actions. And it says load and install. I don't load lazy cam. Uh, that's their little cam piece of software that they use. Uh, I use something else. I use uh, an Aspire product, Aspire uh, or VCAR, which are both from. Uh... Now I'm drawing a blank on who makes those, but you get the point. I don't use that piece of software. And it says no drivers are, are found. Please run driver test. We're going to say OK. And just like that, it is done. It is installed. And when we go take a look on our PC, you're going to see that it is actually installed right there. And this is that driver test application it was talking about. We're not going to be using a parallel port system, so we are not going to run this test. We don't need to. On your desktop, it did make several files. Mach 3 Loader, which is the general menu, Mach 3 Mill, Mach 3 Turn, and Plasma. What we're going to do is we're actually going to take those files that we were given, in the 1694, we're going to grab all of this stuff, and we're going to copy this into our Mach 3 folder right here. And it's going to say, hey, there's some stuff in here. Would you like to replace it? And we are going to replace all the files in the destination. At this point, we are pretty much done. Um, when we run Mach 3 Loader, we're going to see that we have 3 mil, 3 turn, and plasma, which are the same as these over here. And if we pick Mach 3 mil and hit OK, we're going to notice this is actually going to load up and be ready for our CNC machine that we purchased. We're going to notice that our native unit is already set to millimeters. We're going to notice that our ports and pins are already configured. These are all configured basically with zero because we're going to be using the RNR Motion DLL that we just copied into this folder in order to control our CNC. So this is this is a little bit deceiving because this is talking about ports and pins, but we don't really have that because we're using USB. We do have input signals, and you'll notice that we've got our X, Y, and Z uh, limit switches set up for uh, extreme and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus, and A plus and minus as well. There are other inputs that you can define. Probe, this is something that did come with my CNC, it did come with a probe, it came with an alligator clip and a small puck so we can actually uh, do tool length and uh, it is there. We do have a limit override switch. This is actually on the front of the panel. Um, you're going to see that's a big green switch on mine, it might be different on yours, but it's a big green switch and an e-stop, which is that big red button on the front. So these are all configured for us, so there's nothing really left to do. At this point, it is pretty much ready to go. Um, this is Windows 10. This is Windows 10 21 H2 and it's it's ready to go children. One thing I'd like to point out is we do have some plugins and you'll notice that we have the RR Motion plugin right here um, that if we click on it it's going to say hey and you have the e-stop button pressed I'm going to say okay if we look at it now, it's going to say, hey, please connect the USB. And, uh, and of course, we're not going to be able to do that because this is a virtual machine. 
The one thing I do want to point out um, is I always believe in giving credit where credit is due. Now, the guys at Artsoft uh, wrote this software, and you'll notice that if I click on here, this is licensed to that. If you like the software, go buy the license. Um, these guys worked really hard on this for a really long time. They actually have Mach 4 out. I don't know if it's compatible with this unit, but you can still buy a Mach 3 license for like $100 or $150. I would recommend, if you plan on using this, to spend the $150 and get yourself a real license. You'll get support too. Other than that, this machine is ready to go. There is not a whole lot left to do. I am going to go get some screen sets. I'm going to show you how to install those so that we can pick those in just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I actually went and I got some screen sets from uh, my, my little library that I have. And I'm going to show you a couple of these. Uh, the one that I like a lot is the three axis router screen set. Um, it's pretty simple. Installation of these are, are very easy. You just copy whatever's in here basically into your Mach 3 folder. Um, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to go and stick it in my Mach 3 folder. And that's pretty much it. Now, once we have it in there, what we can do is we can go and load screens, and it's going to actually come up and say which one you want. This is the one we just added, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one and say open. And you'll see that this is this is now my screen set. Um, this is the one I use. This is the one I really like a lot. Um, you know, feel free to uh, to use whatever screen set makes you comfortable. But this is the one that I seem to like a lot. It's got big numbers. It's easy to use. It's got functions for override, auto zero, and everything right on the main page. I don't feel I need to actually see the path on the screen as it's cutting, so this is fine for me. There are other ones that are available that you can use. Um, and I will show you. There's a couple other ones. There's a touch screen one. Now, this one's actually a little bit harder to install. It's kind of. I will we'll not do that one. There. We'll take these, we're going to copy these, we're going to stick them in the Mach 3 folder as well. It's ready to go. Now if we go to View, Load Screens, down here at the bottom. Now, of course, we have the fourth one, which is called Dark Screen, which is that one right there. I'm going to click on it. It's going to load it. And it's this one. It's very nice looking. I do like the look of this one. Um, it just didn't work out for me the way that I was hoping for it to work. Um, I'm hoping to use a touchscreen monitor in the future. Um, so these buttons are a little small, especially these down in here. But other than that, this is a really great screen set. And I do like it a lot. But with that, and with how to install those screen sets, um, I am actually going to basically end this video a little bit earlier than I thought I would. But I will put links to the location where I got the screen sets down in the description of the video. And if anybody has any questions, concerns, or anything, uh, please let me know. As far as that license file goes, don't use it. Go buy your own license. And uh, just for the record, this was merely done for... Uh, an example of what you get when you buy it. Um, that is not what I use when I actually run my machine. So once again, if you like it, hit the uh, subscribe button or hit the bell, and that way you'll know when I post something new. Hope you're all having a great day. See you all soon.